All right, hey guys, um, uh, today we're going to have a look at acids and bases. Um, acids are just chemicals that are um, we would consider to be sour. Um, these include things uh, that you probably would see in your houses, like uh, vinegar or lemon juice. Um, but in the science lab, we'd probably use hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. Alkalis you probably haven't heard of before. These are some things that tend to be very soapy. Um, if you rub them between your fingers, then you can kind of feel them start to uh, feel very soap-like. These tend to be in things like cleaning products. Um, a good example is uh, like baking soda, bicarbonate of soda. Um, and we probably use sodium hydroxide in the lab. One of the things you'll notice when we come across acids and bases are um, that we add these warning labels to most of them just to indicate whether or not they're dangerous. Here, you can see I've got a sample of uh, a, a degreaser. And if you look on it, you can see that we've got a corrosive warning label on it. These warning labels are used on a lot of different things just to tell us how dangerous the substance is. Let's go over some of these different warning labels so you know what they look like. An irritant has the following warning labels. And this means it can cause something like reddening of the skin or irritation of the skin. Um, if you want to take care using this, you should probably wear eye protection and wash your hands if it spills. Things that are corrosive can burn through the skin and they can burn through some substances like metals. To take care, you need to wear eye protection and wash your hands um, uh, and you should probably wear gloves if it's very, very corrosive. If something is harmful to health, it's going to cause some kind of long-term or short-term health problem. It could be something like having breathing problems or something longer term, like giving you cancer. Um, to take care, you need to wear eye protection and uh, you should definitely wash your hands if it spills. If something has this skull and crossbones sign, it means that it's toxic, and that means that it's poisonous to humans. In very extreme cases, it could kill you. If you're using something that's got the toxic warning label, you need to make sure that you're wearing gloves to wear eye protection, and you definitely need to make sure that you're washing your hands once you've used it. If something has this fire symbol on, this means that it's flammable. And to take care, you need to keep it away from a flame, because it will set on fire really, really easily. Something that has this fish and tree symbol means that it's harmful to the environment. Now, you don't really need to know what it is that happens to the environment if you are if you do dispose of it there. But the important thing to note is that you must not put them down the sink because if it goes down the sink, then it can enter the water board and cause damage to, to trees, plants, and animals that live in the water. Now, both acids and alkalis are corrosive, and that means that they can burn us. So whenever we do experiments with acids and alkalis, it's really important that we wear goggles so that it protects us. Now, how do we know if something's an acid or an alkali? Now, surely these things are really dangerous, and you don't want to be testing them or putting them on your fingers to see if, if they are um, sour or soapy. That would be really silly. So instead we use a special kind of paper called litmus paper. And it comes in two different kinds. There's blue litmus paper and red litmus paper. Red, uh, litmus will turn red or pink in acids. It will turn blue in alkalis or bases. And it doesn't change color in neutral substances like water. Now, concentrated sulfuric acid is very, very acidic. And you can see here, there's a burn of someone who's had sulfuric acid poured on themselves. But vinegar is also an acid, but it's safe enough to eat. So how can this be the case? We have to think about how acidic something is. The acidity of an acid or an alkali affects how dangerous it is and how fast that it will react.
we create something called the pH scale that goes from 0 through to 14. 0 is the most acidic, 14 is the most alkaline. The lower the number, the more acidic it is. And we can use a chemical called universal indicator to work out what the pH will be because it changes colour based on whether or not it's more acidic or more alkaline. If it has a pH of less than 7, it is an acid. And if it is very low, it is a strong acid. A pH of more than 7 is an alkali. And if it's very high, it is a strong alkali. If something is exactly 7, then we consider this to be neutral. And it is not an acid, nor is it an alkali. By using universal indicator paper, this is going to be more accurate than our litmus paper because it can tell you exactly what the pH of the substance is to the nearest round number. We can be even more accurate and you can use a digital pH meter and these can normally be accurate up to two decimal places. But these meters are very expensive so we don't tend to use them in schools. Um, you can see this pH meter is accurate to one decimal place because there's one digit after the decimal point. This is more accurate than pH paper. This pH meter you can see has two decimal points after the first digit. Sorry, two decimal places after the decimal point. This means that the pH meter is accurate to two decimal places it is even more accurate than the original pH meter, which is more accurate than the pH paper. pH meters are more precise because they don't suffer from human error. Sometimes it can be really difficult to work out the colour of universal indicator paper, so it's a lot easier to use the digital meter. It's very easy to read off what this meter says. And it's very difficult to tell the difference between this pH 3 and pH 4, so you could get it wrong. Thank you very much, guys.